This is Fiona Beale, representing Schoolnet South Africa. Uh, we welcome you and thank you for tuning in to today's webinar entitled How to Create a Google Tour. We're very pleased to welcome our two lovely webinars, uh, presenters that you can see in the corner, Keshma Patel and Judy Francisco from Micklefield Primary School for Girls in Cape Town. Keshma is a grade six teacher who's very well versed in both Google and Microsoft programs. Her grade six girls work on laptops in a one-to-one -one environment with Keshma directing a class from a Google site and every girl presenting a large portion of their work on their own Google sites. Judy is the technology coordinator at Micklefield and a more creative teacher would be hard to find. I always like to see what Judy's up to because she's always up to something very exciting at uh, technology, with technology. So thank you to both of you for presenting today. Uh, they uh, both presenters have put they're presenting together and they've put on their webcam, but they will turn it off. To save on bandwidth for the rest of the webinar. But before we start, um, Judy's provided a link to some further material regarding Google Earth, and I'm going to put a link into the chat box. And then talking about the chat box, please introduce yourself and where you're from. And during the webinar, we encourage you to ask questions and uh, make comments. So the webinar is being recorded and um, it will be available on our blog as well as on our SchoolNet YouTube channel. And I'll give the links in the chat box. So now to the presentation we're all looking forward to. Over to you, Judy and Keshma, and thank you again for being willing to. Thanks, Fiona. Thank you for that lovely introduction, and welcome, everybody. I'm glad we've got people joining and watching us this afternoon. I'm going to switch off the webcam and switch over to our screen so you can see what we're up to. Um, as Fiona said, I'm a grade six teacher at Micklefield Primary School. Um, yeah, and uh, we have a bring your own device policy at Micklefield, and so the girls generally work on laptops. We encourage them to work on laptop laptops. I'm very big on integrating all subjects into my blended learning project, and this is one that we did in term one. Most, almost all of my blended learning projects start with a very detailed outline, project outline as well as a how-to guide. And then the girls work at their own pace after I introduce the project. Um, and then with the help of the how-tos, and then obviously it gives me time to work around, walk around and give girls that need individual help attention as well. So for this specific project, it was part of the European exploration, part of the grade six curriculum. And we focused on Bartholomew Dice and Vasco da Gama. And I wanted to come up with the project where the girls could visualize their routes that they took or their voyages that they took and do it in a fun and interesting way. And so I originally started off using Google Maps and then we thought, why about, well, what about starting and using a Google Earth tour to recreate their voyages? So this is basically what the girls project was. It was integrated with the geography, which was map skills, then history, which was the European exploration, as well as English, as the girls had to write a script. So we worked on dialogues and what parts of speech goes with dialogues and how to set that up. Oh, did Fiona just say her sound has disappeared? Is everybody okay in the year? Okay, great. Um, so, yes, so that's how I started the project. And like I said, it's integrated with a lot of subjects, detailed project outline with a how-to guide, which we will be sharing with you on a link. And then that's where Judy comes in because I set up all the project, provide the content, and then Judy teaches the girls the technology aspect of the project. And that's how we work together. So here we go and let's begin with our Google Earth tour. Hi everyone, it's Judy here, I'm known as Ms. Wiz at Micklefield, and Keshma has kindly invited me to join her for this 
webinar. So I'm assuming that you all have heard of Google Earth, and um, I'm also assuming that you know that you've got to download it from the internet. It is free. So we're going to already skip that part on how to download Google Earth, uh, because that's simply a step-by-step -step process of the internet. And we're going to start getting a tour ready, just like Keshma said um, she needed the grade sixes to do for Vasco da Gama and Bartholomew Dias. The most, most, most important thing to know about creating a tour is on the left hand side, you will notice that it says places and underneath places, it has uh, where all the folders go. You have to create the folder first. If you don't create the folder first, then your places won't go into that folder and they won't form part of your tour. Uh, so the most important thing is to create that folder. To create the folder, you click on My Places and you can, whoops, mine doesn't want to bring it up. Add my folder, I'm just going to unclick here. Sorry about this. Yeah. It does this occasionally where it just sticks on tour and it doesn't pull up the correct folder. So just excuse me for a moment while I take away the Google Earth tour, quickly put it back on. Don't worry, this only happens to my computer and not to the girls in the lab. And I'm pulling it up again. And there's my Google Earth. Right, so as I said, on the left-hand side, you right-click on My Places and you will see something called folder. You create the folder, give it the name, let's say um, Tour of Schoolnet. At this point, you could go and put in the URL of an image that you would like. I'm not going to do that now, but if you would like to, then you can do that. You can also add interesting links to Schoolnet. And I'm going to say, OK. So on the left hand side, you will see I've got something that says Tour of Schoolnet. That is my folder. Inside that folder, we are going to place all the places. Um, so we're not actually going to do Schoolnet, Schoolnet, but let's say we're going to do Table Mountain. So if that was where their head office was. So at the top, in the search area, I type Table Mountain and I let Google Earth go and find Table Mountain for me. It will put a red icon, but that red icon actually doesn't stay when you are in a Google tour later on. So the next thing that you need to do is get ready to place your icon. So you go up to the top, you will see the toolbar at the top and you have got a yellow pin and it's called Add Place Mark. And if you click on that, you're going to put in your heading. So if I'm going to put in Table Mountain Schoolnet Headquarters, I can click on Color and Style, and if I want the label color to be a different color, I can say make it black or red or blue. I'm going to make it white so that it stands out against the mountain. And I do you see that the yellow pin is inside the box. I can click that and I can go and choose a brand new custom pin that I would like to put in. So if you can see something that looks like a mountain, I do know there's the volcano, but let's say I wanted to put in a green pin. I just click once on the green. If I would like it to be bigger, up at the top, next to color, we've got scale, and I can make it slightly bigger. And then you say OK, and you click OK again. That green pin is now ready for the tour. I want to show you what you can do within that pin. So if I just rolled my mouse, I will zoom out. And if I roll my mouse the other way, I zoom in. If I hold down control, my image will spin to the left. And if I keep holding control and roll my mouse the other way, it will spin to the right. 
if I hold down shift, it will scroll down to go above and below. So I'm going to decide which way I want my final resting point to be when people come on my SchoolNet tour. I'm going to say this is the perfect view over there. Exactly how you see it on my screen now is how I want it to appear in my final tour. So I have to look for my tour sign, my table mountain place mark on the left hand side and I have to right click on it and do you see it says snapshot view? Well, if I click that once, the computer will remember exactly how I'm viewing my computer screen now and exactly how I'm viewing my Google Earth now. And it will take me back to that point. I just want to check that everybody is okay. I'm looking at the comments down the side. Is everybody doing all right? They'll just check that you can all still hear us and that we're going along at a speed that works for you. Good, says Jonathan. Thanks, says Wendy. Awesome, says Carolyn. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to carry on then with my next step. So we've made one of them. Remember, you always go back to your folder. So I have my folder called Tour of School on the left-hand side. I click on that before I go and search for my next part. So if I'm now going to add into SchoolNet, Micklefield School, I type Micklefield School into my search bar, I press enter, I let Google Earth go off and find Micklefield School for me. But once again, that red icon that you see there won't become part of my tour unless I create a place mark. So once again, I go up to the top where the yellow thumb tack is, I click add, I go and type Micklefield School. I can go and change my icon again and I could maybe see if there's something that looks like a school. It's a circus tent and sometimes our school feels like a bit of a circus. So I'm going to choose that one and I can say, okay, I've now got a circus tent. I could also go and add an image if I wanted to. As I said, it asks for the image URL. And so that's just a case of going onto the internet, copying the URL link and popping it in there. But I'm gonna leave that out for now so that I don't confuse you with too much information. So I've now put in my second one and let's see if you can remember about the snapshot view because that's probably the part that excites the children the most. So I'm gonna zoom out. I'm going to change my view to have a look up towards the mountain. And so I'm holding down control and rolling my mouse. And I think I'm kind of heading towards the mountain. I'm going back to shift and rolling my mouse. And I can kind of see a mountain in the background. Let's go. Can you see the mountains in the background? That's probably more of what we see. What would you say, Keshma? Yeah. Okay, so now I've got my view. I go, once again, I go off to the left-hand side. I look for the word Micklefield. I right-click on it, and I choose Snapshot View. And I click once on that. The computer will now remember exactly the view that I want to keep in my tour. And I'm just going to go and add one more purely so that when we put this tour together, it makes a bit of sense to you. Okay, so where shall we head off to next, Keshma? Shall we go to Rondebosch Common? Yes. All right. You can see I've been there before, so that's why it's on my mind. And since Rondebosch Common is right here, I let the computer go and find Rondebosch Common, the search bar. There it is. And why don't we be a little bit fancier here? And let's go and add a polygon. Okay. Yay, it's just a few blocks away from Carolyn, she says. Okay, polygon is the shape. So I'm going to go and create uh, my polygon. 
when you click on it, move the box out the way, but it's quite annoying. You then go and click on the edges of the shape that you want. And you finish with a double click. And there is your polygon. Isn't that cool? And I can tell my polygon, if I go to style and color, I can say, please go and make my Ronda Bosch common orange and obviously give it a nice heading so that it's easily found. So there we have it. If I look on the left hand side, <clears throat> I have a folder. I can see that it's a picture of a folder. It says tour of Schoolnet. Under my folder, I have three sub place marks. I have Table Mountain, I have Micklefield, and I have Ronda Bosch. At this stage, you could play a tour that runs automatically but has no audio. And I'm quickly going to show you how you do that. And once again, it all comes back to the fact that you need to look at your folder. <clears throat> if you don't work from a folder, it won't let you carry on with a tour and it won't let you create a tour. Keshma is just pointing out to me that perhaps I'd like to show you how to add some text. So I'm going to, before we do the tour, quickly go back to Table Mountain. And <clears throat> I did that by double clicking on it. And then I'm going to go down to Properties and I'm going to add a description in here. Now, either I copy pasted from somewhere and changed it into my own words. Table Mountain is a fantastic wonder, wonder of Cape Town. And you could also insert a picture. Oh, look at me leaving out my capital letters and proper nouns. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So if I double click on my table mountain now, you will see that it brings up the information. I could have also inserted an image as well. And as I said, you take the image from um, Google and just get the URL. In terms of the project, this is nice because at each <coughs> stop along Bartholomew Dias of Vasco da Gama's voyage, the girls could then insert a little bit of information about that point and plus a picture. While Judy's just drinking some water, I just want to quickly also show you down here is the layers section. And this is quite nice because you can include or exclude borders, places, roads, 3D buildings and such. So if, for example, I clicked on roads, you could see it automatically inserted the roads. Um, I could also insert 3D buildings um, and I can insert borders. So the girls had to realize what would be present in that time period. And Judy will show you later. You can also change the time zone of the area so that it would be a, not, not age appropriate, it would be time historic. appropriate, historically correct. Thank you, Judy. It would be historically correct. So, for example, in the 18th century, we wouldn't have our tar road. So you could take that out from your tour. Fantastic. Thanks, Keshma. I was having a slight coughing fit and she gave me time <laughs> to go and get some water. Okay. Could maybe create, I missed that, Carolyn. I'm just going to pop and see what you said there. Could maybe create the place markers for the tour and ask questions in the text. And then another in the class could answer the questions within the text box. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant idea. That is starting with the collaboration. That is fantastic. It makes the children really take note of each other's tours and start to think about their thinking, which is something that Keshma loves to get the goal to do. Metacognition all the way. So that is wonderful suggestion, Carolyn. Thank you for that. Okay, we're now going to go back to my favorite thing again, which is the folder. It's always folder, 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 folder. Everything comes off this folder. If, if I've drilled anything into the goals, it's with Google Earth, you have to have that folder. So I hope that message is coming through loud and clear. When you are on your folder and you have made all your place marks, you will then notice that there is a button called the Play Tour button. 
I don't know if you can see my cursor. It's the purple cursor with the little round playful ping pong balls. Um, when I point at play tour, then uh, there's a little arrow. Can you? I hope you can all see where I'm clicking. I'm going to click once now on play tour. It will automatically start to work its way through my tour. Well, it should. Here it starts to go. Now that is playing automatically without me clicking. But you will notice that it remembers my snapshot views because I can see the mountain in the background and it remembers my snapshot view. That is called a simple tour. This is the one without audio. We will be showing you the audio one. If at this point you wanted to, the girls or the boys to save their work, there is a save button at the bottom. Can you get the tour to go slower? Absolutely. In fact, I speeded my tour up purely for this presentation and I had to um, find that button. So that's a very good question because sometimes if you haven't got good bandwidth, you need longer time uh, to allow the pixelation to go. You also need time to be able to show and read the text. So I'm going to now show you where you go to slow down the tour. I had it on a very fast five seconds. So here I go with um, showing you where you can go and change. You will actually get so excited. There are so many things to change, but I know to keep things simple, I get ahead of myself. So under tools at the top, there is something called options. And if you click on options, well, as you can see, there is plenty that you can change. So I'm now going to go to the touring tab and you will see that the first question, uh, first thing that you can change is time between features. I had it that it was flying pretty fast. It was at five seconds. I could make that 10 seconds. I could make that 30 seconds. It also all depends on how much talking the children are going to do. And I can wait at a feature for maybe 11 seconds. I'm not going to go into fly along lines here, but please take note of this one called fly along lines. If you have created lines uh, along a route, for instance, Keshma had the girls doing an explorer route down the coast of Africa, you could make it fly along the, the actual line that you've drawn, the coast. Thank you. Okay, so I'm changed the time and I'm going to leave it there. And for another time, you can have a look at the navigation in general and maybe come back to us and tell us what you've discovered. I'm going to click the apply button and the OK button. And if I had to play the tour now, I'm going back to play tour. And you see everything's much slower. It's slowed right down. And for 11 seconds, it's going to wait at Table Mountain. So that at this time, if you wanted to, you could actually click on things. See, I can double click on the left while it's going and it showed me the text. When I don't want the text anymore, I can click the cross. You can also within it, move things. Right, so that's how to slow down the time. I'm now going to show you the last thing and then I'm handing back to Keshma. So I'm going back to my folder. Remember, it's all about the folder. I've double clicked on my folder called School Tour of SchoolNet. And the last thing I'm going to show you now is how to create an audio tour, a bit like what I'm doing now. And this part the girls loved. So I double click on my tour on the left hand side. I now head up to the top right near where we had the place mark. We had the polygon shape and there is an old fashioned video camera. It's got a plus sign and it says record a tour. So I'm going to actually quickly do one. I'm going to click on record a tour. Notice that at the bottom is the red record button. That will record without sound. So that's not useful if you're wanting the children to do voiceovers. You won't be needing the blue microphone sound. 
Okay, so I'm now going to click once on this blue microphone icon at the bottom, and I am going to work my way through the places. So here we go. I'm clicking on the blue. And I go and double click on Table Mountain. Hello, and welcome to my tour of Cape Town. This is where the headquarters of SchoolNet is. You can see, if you had to look to the one side, we have the city, and to the other side, we have got some beautiful reservoirs and dams. We're now going to head off to Micklefield. This is where I'm actually double clicking on the left hand side on the word Micklefield. Here we are at Micklefield School, and I'm going to use my shift button and my control button so that as I'm talking and telling you about the little pink school, people are having a look and enjoying the views and I'm giving them lots of exciting information. I'm now going to go to the left and double click on the word Rondebosch. I double click and it now moves to Rondebosch Common. And I keep talking and I tell you all about the flora and the fauna and that's fantastic. And now my tour is done. I go to the bottom and I click my red record button. And on, on, on the left hand side, it will show me that I have a tour inside my tour of um, SchoolNet. I have got, trying to see it, I think it's popped up to there, tour with audio. This is my lovely little tour of Cape Town. Let's just show you the sights and sounds of three places that are very. I think I showed you an old one. It's the right one. Okay, so that is, it's as simple as that, that you record it using that button at the top. There is a um, save button. Once you are happy with it, you can go to the left hand side, go to now the tour, and you can go save as. It's going to save it as a KMZ file. You go and save it into wherever you're going to save it. Give it a nice name and click save. Here comes the sad part. You can only view it in Google Earth. You can't view this as a movie. So you're either going to get the children to watch it live. Did the girls share their tours with school outside South Africa? Well, in a way, Keshma did, and I'll let you tell her more, to let her tell you more about how they then filmed this so that children who don't have Google Earth could view it and we used iPads for that. So I'm going to hand over to Keshma at this point. Thank you. Thanks, Judy. So because of that, and okay, so because of that sharing permission and having to view it through Google Earth, what we came up with is because I like my girls to record all their information on their website. So each girl in my class has a website and throughout the year they upload all their project work onto their site. I then, then share their sites with other schools or different people depending on the project we are doing. And because of this, of being able to only view a Google Earth tour on Google Earth, we the only solution we came up with, and maybe you have some solutions which you could share with us is, is that we got the girls to record their tours using an iPad. So they held an iPad in front of the computer screen and recorded their tour, and then we saved their video recordings of their tours, and then we uploaded those videos to their websites, which then were very easily shared. It also made it easier for me to mark um, and share with the school and with anybody that viewed their website. Um, yeah, so that's basically how we did it. I'm going to show you an example. No, it does not have a URL, very sadly. No. Um, we've tried embedding it, it. It used to have a URL and the feature has been taken out. Um, we no, can't just screencast either. It doesn't no. pick up the sound. We tried all sorts of things. I contacted uh, Google and in November 2015, there used to be an add-on that you could put onto Google Earth that would convert it into a movie for you, but they have taken that functionality away. And so they suggested that we do the filming yes. using another device to film. Yeah, we also tried seeing if there was a way in which you can, if which we could convert a KMZ yeah. file 
into another file type and that didn't work. So we did play around quite a bit. Um, I'm going to go back to the comments because I think, it's yeah, nice. so the screen cost-o-matic didn't work, which was a pity. Um, so I'm going to show you a quick little example of a ghouls video. I won't show you all of it, but just a quick look. And then if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask. So enjoy the little the video. Hello. Today, I'm going to show you the refactor department of Blake's down to India. And all the places he shot on the way. I'm also going to be telling you a bit about it. Back to the bottom was the first message to send this big camera from Europe to India. Pointing the lead at sight and for finding a driving ship that was possible to stay on that aggregate to eat in. Back to the bottom was the great explorer. Lisbon. Back to the bottom was shot from the gate at Lisbon. Pointing the lead at sight and the bottom was off to catch the ship and stay on that aggregate to India. Pointing the one to trade with India at this point. This was the capital of Portugal, and it was one of the most important cities for exploration. It was also one of Europe's most important ports. After he set sail from Lisbon, he made sail on to the very first stop, which was the Canary Islands. I think we know that. That's where we're gone and. Okay, so that gives you some idea of how it flies from one shot to the other, and then the goals having to maneuver which area would be the best place to view it. Um, things like where the script would come in is where I brought in the English. Like I said, you could inter we integrated with geography with map skills. Um, so we used atlases, the physical atlases and atlases on Google Earth. Um, we looked at coordinates as well. And then their skills of presenting as well, which was nice. So that's all from us, I think, on our side. I'm going to stop our screen share. If anybody has any questions, um, please feel free to ask now. Thanks, everyone. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, good, because I'm on a different computer. <laughs> my my yes. to the sound just went completely for some reason, but I've left it on because it's recording the webinar, and I'm hoping that everything's fine. Wow, that was absolutely amazing. Um, Yay! Has anyone yeah, I'm else glad got you any it. questions? Any further questions? Okay. Um, Carolyn has asked how I assess the project. Um, I had draw up quite a detailed rubric pack which I'm happy to share with you um perhaps I don't know if you could maybe put your email address or I could get the email addresses through okay, Fiona so maybe, of everyone that, that attended um, then I can share, share that resource with you in the box in case I don't have your email Oh, I think I have a better idea. I'll share my email address and then everybody could email me. <laughs> and I'll put Judy's there as well. Well, I can't wait to try this out with my classes. So I've been really inspired. Thank you so much. Pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Fiona. Thanks for having us. And let us know if any of you try it out. Yes. We would love to hear uh, that the children love it, even if they go in the wrong direction or um, <clears throat> they, they struggle to perhaps put the place mark on. Wow. In the end, they all get wow, there, and, and it's a wonderful blended learning tool. Okay. She's